Hi, I am Cesar Santos. On my left, classical beauty. On my right, my interpretation of beauty. Let's compare and contrast the two of them. On my left is a painting I did after Williams Bouguereau. It's a copy of one of the greatest masters that lived in the 19th century. On my right, a new painting perceived, composed and created by me. So my left will represent the idealized beauty of the classical period, while my right represents my contemporary taste. I'm looking at the similarities between the two paintings first. They're both young ladies about the same class status. Almost their complete figure is showing. They both exist within an environment that will influence their character, their existence, their narrative. Here she's surrounded by nature, giving her a more lyrical atmosphere. Here she's surrounded by an empty space, a more industrial space that will perhaps reflect in her character. They are both white women holding a grape product. One has a platter with uh, real grapes on it. The other one has a cup with wine made out of grapes in it. Even the distance, physical distance around them is pretty much the same on top, on the sides, on the bottom. So there is a lot of similarities between these two paintings. They are both painted in a representational way, which means they both read as living individuals. They also show a naturalistic value arrangement, meaning that the tones from light to dark represent nature as humans perceive it. The color arrangement and color composition also has similarities. Let's look at the blues from the shirt and the apron, the red on the dress, the, the red of the cup or the glove, the golden color of the necklace with the golden color of the sleeves, the whites, the blacks, the greens around them, and the browns in the background, or in my case, in the hair. They're both dressed in their contemporary styles for their time, and also they're representing the female power, a feminine strength. Now let's look at the differences, which is the response from my point of view. I am uh, interpreting what I perceived around my time. On my left is ideal beauty, which means that the proportions have been altered, tweaked, to a more mathematical response according to the Greek ideals. The big eyes, the graceful transition from forehead to nose, the nose also being narrow as well as the mouth, creating this idealized unrealistic beauty. This will give you the idea of an imaginary being, someone that you cannot know doesn't look like your neighbor because it's idealized to the point that it doesn't look believable enough. In contrast to my actual neighbor, which I tend to represent with the loyalty of her features, the way she actually is in the natural world. Her facial proportions make you believe that you can have access, that you can approach this person. It's important to notice that I have idealized the form to give a sense of volume. Otherwise, it will look photographic. Photographs or any mechanical reproduction do not represent form appropriately because that's an interpretation from the artist. A photo will give you a flat representation of the image in order to create volume, space, and the illusion of distance. Their attitudes are very different. Just by looking at their face, mine has a more direct approach, a little bit more confrontational, while the classical version is more idealized, more peaceful. On the classical representation, the hands are arranged in such a way that will show a beautiful design, an organic movement, but it gives the feeling of being posed, of being staged, too prepared. While my figure shows a less premeditated pose um, of the hands, showing the glitter of the nails and showing the, the way she's holding the cup about to lift it up. I am sacrificing the beautiful arrangement of the fingers for the benefit of the weird individual. Now that I have mentioned weird, let's talk about the shirts. On the classical representation, the white is normally placed underneath the main focal point of the painting. So normally you see a lot of classical art with white colors, white shirts, white things around the bottom of the head, which is where the painter would like us to look at. Our natural tendency is to rise up the vision. If you have a white element surrounded by a dark background, 
the contrast is what's going to call the attention and then the eye will rise up finding the individual presented. On my painting, I've decided to drop the shirt to show the shoulder as a little bit of a rebellion against the Renaissance ideals that you shouldn't show a shoulder. That is considered a sin or a bad taste. Actually, it's more common to see exposed breasts than a shoulder in the Renaissance. But I use the principle of the white to call the attention and then raise the eye to meet the individual, which her face is surrounded by that dark frame of the hair, which is in part surrounded by more white. The design I decided to do for the hair and the way I presented it is also to give that aspect of the freedom of the individual. I have reserved the highest chroma for the plastic cup, the red cup in between her legs, which will offset all the cool colors surrounding her. In general, I have altered the principles of the masters to represent a contemporary setting, a contemporary attitude, a form of expression with the capacity to stay universal and at the same time personal. My goal is to offer new arrangements that will define new principles for art, that will relate and provoke a dialogue with our young viewers to promote the love for knowledge. I want to express my love for technique as well as my love for the content and to show that I am a classically trained contemporary artist. Do you think we should wrap this video up? Yes? Okay, my left tells me what is universal. My universe tells me what's right. My neighbor challenged the viewer by picking the classical fight. <laughs>